So Cloud9 just got absolutely embarrassed by Team Liquid in a 3-0 stomp, bringing a crashing end to the supposed to be Super Team's spring split. I want to go over the drafts from games 2 and 3 specifically, as these two were absolutely atrocious and had C9 entering the game with absurd disadvantages. And make no mistake, I'm not sugarcoating anything here. As a long time Cloud9 fan, this drafting has been embarrassing to watch this split, and whoever is leading it should be fired without hesitation. Let's take a look, starting with the game 2 draft. So TL first picked Varus, which is good. A very versatile champion that's strong at all points in the game. Varus' main themes as a champion are range and scaling, so we'll be looking for TL to build a pretty basic comp around that, probably just looking to front to back teamfight. And Cloud9 first rotate Senna and Lee Sin, immediately losing the game, and that's not an exaggeration. The primary reason this is such a bad pairing is because these champions are completely counterintuitive in theme. Senna wants to Omega scale and play with her crazy range late game, while Lee Sin is an early and mid game playmaker that needs to dive in melee range. These two champs do not fit together in the slightest, meaning that Cloud9 has no comp identity to build toward and no aim in the draft. If they go toward scaling, Lee won't fit, and if they go toward early skirmishing, Senna won't fit. And they even end up doing the worst of both, splitting down the middle of both themes. Anyways, TL, as predicted, continue with a basic front to back comp with Nautilus and Volibear. Even though these champs don't scale particularly well, it's still a good rotation for a few reasons. First, the Nautilus is a good takeaway from C9 because it's the most common pairing with Senna recently, which essentially forces them to lock Tom Kench on R3. Volibear can also match the early pressure and skirmishing power of Lee Sin early, while also scaling better as a frontliner. Together, Nott and Voli simply serve as a strong frontline with good CC setup for the Varus and whatever other DPS they decide to pick. With the Tom Kench on R3 as predicted, C9 has completely floundered the first phase, as previously explained with a completely flawed comp identity that will not be able to function or coordinate at all inside the game, while TL's comp is simple and solid. C9 then went full Godzilla mode and took their chances of winning to minus 1, with a blind pick Renekton on R4. Not only is this champ just Omega useless, similar to Lee Sin, if he falls behind at all, even the slightest bit, he will be useless. Also, it's blind pick top, which is never a good idea, especially on red side. R5 should always be saved for top lane counter unless blue side picks it early for some reason. Blind picking Renekton on R4 shows just how lost C9's drafting strategy was. TL round out with Tristana and Rumble, which is great for them. Tristana's a great pairing with Varus with scaling and range, a safe blind pick, and a strong mid jungle 2v2 with Volibear. And Rumble is a great punish to the Renekton blind, as it will decimate the lane phase and outscale the croc, which will be more of a newborn baby croc this game. And lastly, C9 R5 Huey, which again doesn't make any sense. It loses the 1v1 to Trist at every point in the game, and will get pushed in during lane. So what C9 has done here is pick a strong early jungle that needs to make plays, and 3 losing lanes to go along with it. They also have 2 completely self-countering themes, with Senna and Huey wanting to play hard scaling and range, and Lee Sin and Renekton wanting to play early and mid game skirmishing. Simply put, the game was lost in draft, and TL was handed a free win. Now moving on to the game 3 draft, TL opened with the Varus B1 again, so nothing new to comment there. C9 first rotate Lucian and Nami. Now this is obviously a big talking point in the pro community right now, on whether or not it's good. I'm not going to dive super in depth in this video, but generally I'm not a big fan. Either way, this gives C9 a big theme around mid-game fighting and short-ranged burst, so C9 should look to pick similar themes and champions that can enable the Lucian pick. TL second rotate Rel and Ziggs, which is good. The Rel I'm not a huge fan of as a champion, but it is a good flex pick while also putting pressure on the Lucian if he ever dives forward. The Ziggs pick is really good. As you can see, Varus and Ziggs scale extremely well and have insane range. Compare this to the short range of Lucian and assumed skirmishers to pair with the theme, and Varus and Ziggs are ideal picks. C9 R3 Zinzao, which is good for them. 
the best early game jungler in the game, and it scales better than people give it credit for. More importantly though, it fits with the theme of short range early to mid game skirmishing. The problem though, through the first phase for Cloud9, is that they have to play perfect in the early game. If they make a mistake or fall behind at all, they will instantly lose because of Varus and Zig's scaling and range advantage. C9 then R4 Karma, which is a good pick. Zin works optimally with an enchanter at his side, so this is another pick to help enable the skirmishing and dive. Again though, I will continue to mention the theme counter of Team Liquid. Even though C9 is pretty consistent in theme, their champs are completely countered in identity by Team Liquid's. TL do almost throw away their draft with a Vi Renekton last rotation. The interesting thing is, is when C9 blind picked Renekton, TL insta countered it with Rumble. When TL blind pick Renekton, C9 uses R5 for Olaf. This tells me that the C9 draft was probably pre-planned beforehand, and they didn't really think about anything in terms of counters or comp themes. Either way, the Olaf won't even win against the Renekton, and C9 is continuing to run face first into Varus and Ziggs, which will never go well. Personally, I would have sent Karma top into the Renekton and matched Scaling Wave Clear Champ into Ziggs. Something simple like Orianna would have been fine. Instead, C9 again throw away their draft with a useless Olaf pick. Simply put, if they aren't 5k gold and 3 dragons up at 20 minutes, they will not win the game. Period. Overall, this series was a complete pounding for Cloud9, and it all started in the draft. Of course, you can point to the players not playing well and not being on the same page in terms of communication, and that would be completely valid. League of Legends, especially competitive play, begins in champion select. When a team enters the game at this level of disadvantage, it's really no wonder why they lose in the manner they did today. Thanks for watching, see you next time.